Hello everyone, uh, I hope you're doing well wherever you're watching me from. Uh, this is Masset Lab Academy. Today our lesson is about the motor effect. Now in this lesson we are going to look at a demonstration. We are going to demonstrate about the motor effect. We are going to make an observation and then explain that concept about the motor effect and then we are able to uh, solve uh, a given question. Now the motor effect this is actually how a motor, any electric motor works or any electric motor that works, it uses the motor effect. So in the next demonstration, um, in this demonstration, this is an experiment that I did before, you can able to see um, what happens when we have a magnet. So if you have a magnet here, North Pole, and you have another magnet here, here the South Pole, and then what happens to a conductor if you have uh, a conductor that is carrying current so when a conductor carrying current passes or is put between um, you know, the magnet, the north and south or is put between in a magnetic field what happens to this, uh, to this conductor so in this experiment uh, you will be able to observe that Now, when a conductor is put in a magnetic field, it experiences a force. In other words, it is able to move within the magnetic field, just the way you see it from the demonstration. Now, that is the observation. So, when a conductor carrying current is placed within the magnetic field, it experiences a force which makes the conductor to move depending on the strength of the magnetic field or the size of the current that is flowing through the conductor. Now, the question is, what is it that is happening? That is the explanation. What is it that is happening that makes this conductor to experience a magnetic force? Now, when current is into, you see, in this kind of setup, we are having a wire which you can able to see the whole part of it. Suppose you want to view uh, from one particular point, so north, and then we have south. We can either use a dot. This dot here represents current within a conductor, within the conductor. So the dot here represents current that is flowing out of the page. And for this case here, is out of my body, that is towards you. But then if we have cross, Cross, this represents a conductor such that the current is now flowing into the page or into the board for my case here. So if we have, if we have, so this is the North Pole here, so it's South Pole, South Pole, and then we have a conductor here that is current current. So if we have here cross, it means the current is into, um, into the, the, the board. Now from here, there will be magnetic field. There will be magnetic field around uh, this conductor itself. So there is magnetic field around the conductor, and there is also magnetic field between the north pole and the and the south pole. So using uh, the right hand rule, if we have a conductor so that the current is into, what do we do? So using the right hand grip rule. So the right hand grip rule. If you hold a conductor such that the thumb is pointing the direction of the current, then the fingers will point the direction of the magnetic field. So that is what happens. So if you do like this, this points the direction of the current, and then this will point the direction of the magnetic field. So for such a case, there will be magnetic field, there will be magnetic field around uh, this, there will be magnetic field around this, uh, they're supposed to spread away from the conductor so the direction is towards this 
that is according to the right hand grip rule the right hand grip rule that is it so for this particular case here there is magnetic field there is magnetic field around uh, I'll just draw maybe two of them just two here uh, and then this case here using the right hand grip rule the direction of the magnetic field will be towards this direction so that is the direction of the magnetic field but then remember there is also magnetic field between the north pole and the south pole so this corner is placed within the within the field now for this particular case here the field that is above this conductor up here will be originating or moving or will be in the same direction as that of the conductor so if the field lines are in the same direction, they tend to attract. So that means they become closer. So the field originating from here, they will be, they'll tend to be closer to the run. Remember the field lines never intersect, so the field lines are closer. Now down here, the field lines from north to south will be in the opposite direction to that of the conductor here and if the field lines are in the opposite direction they repel each other so what happens how we show they are repelling each other they, there's a, a larger space uh, between uh, the field lines so there's a larger space between the field lines so we can have the same number of our field lines but when the field lines are closer it means it is stronger at that region that they saw the field lines, the direction we maintain. Now, at uh, so let's say we have uh, part X up here, and then we have part Y. There's a region called Y here. Now, this region, region X, has a greater field, so the field is stronger at X uh, than Y. So the field lines behave like elastic strings. So what happens? They tend to straighten. So as the thin lines tend to straighten, what happens? Um, X, this conductor here, will experience a resultant force that is acting downward. Will experience a resultant force that is acting downward. Since the field at X is stronger than the field at Y, that means the resultant force will act downward. And therefore, this conductor here will experience a force that is acting downward. That is basically what is happening uh, with the observation that we, we made. And all this is due to the motor effect. Now, as I've mentioned, uh, during the exam, you may be asked to predict the direction in which uh, a conductor experiences a force. So how do we do that? That is when we apply the Fleming's left-hand rule. And the Fleming's left-hand rule is just that it's very simple. That when uh, the first finger, second finger, and uh, the thumb are mutually at right angle such that uh, the first finger points the direction of the magnetic field uh, the second finger points the direction of the current then the thumb will point the direction of the force or movement of the conductor let's look at uh, let's confirm this with the case of what we just explained now in the example of what i was trying to explain here let's confirm if the fleming's left hand rule will prove that indeed this conductor here will experience a downward force. Now, with my left hand rule, the first finger is supposed to point the direction of the magnetic field, that is uh, from north to south. So here it is. This cross here means that the current is into the board. So I'm supposed to, this is supposed to be pointing the direction into the board. So what do I do? I just tie it like this. And if I do like this, you can able to see clearly. Uh, the second finger is pointing the direction of the current, north to south, and then my thumb is pointing downward to confirm that indeed this conductor will experience a downward force. Let's look at some examples. So there's a question here about the motor effect, and uh, no, before we look at this, we can uh, start with this one here. Now in this paper, or this question here, the figure 10.1 shows a wire that carries a current into the page. Into the page, you can able to see the cross here shows the current into the page. Even if the question doesn't tell you that you should be able to identify this or 
recall that the cross means current is into the page. Now the circles on the figure shows the pattern of the magnetic field around the, the wire. On the figure, draw an arrow on each circle to show the direction of the magnetic field. Once again, for this kind of question here, this one we apply the right hand grip rule. We apply the right hand grip rule. And the right hand grip rule, as I mentioned before, uh, we're supposed to hold it like this. So if you hold a conductor such that the thumb is pointing the direction of the current, then the fingers is supposed to point the direction of the magnetic field. Now, for this case here, the current is into the page, so this is what we do, just as simple as this. And then I will know that uh, experimentally the direction is, uh, you know, direction is uh, recognized or is shown by use of uh, magnetic compass. Now, state why the spacing of the circles increases as the distance from the wire increases. Now what happens is this, uh, the strength the strength of the field is um, seen by how spacing the magnetic field lines are. So the strength of the magnetic field uh, will depend, if it is drawn on the diagram like this, you will look at the space between the field lines, magnetic field lines. And also uh, the number of the field lines. So the number of field lines or the space between the field lines can tell us about the strength of the magnetic field. What you're seeing here is that uh, the space between the field lines is increasing, meaning that what? Uh, meaning that uh, the magnetic field is becoming weaker away from the uh, away from the conductor. So magnetic field magnetic field around the conductor becomes weaker becomes weaker away so magnetic field becomes weaker away from the conductor so there's a good start so now we can look at this question now for this question here, the figure 9.1 shows a horizontal wire, PQ, that is placed in the gap between the north pole and the south pole of a magnet, as you can able to see. Now there is a current in the wire in the direction P to Q, as indicated here. Uh, a force acts on the current uh, carrying wire in the magnetic field. Now on the figure, draw an arrow labeled M to show the direction of the magnetic field in the gap between the poles of the magnet. One of the properties of magnetic field lines is that um, they originate from north to, to south. So that means we just need to draw a straight line from here, uh, indicate the arrow and label it M as it's instructed. Now, draw another arrow, label F, to show the direction of the force on the conductor carrying wire due to the magnetic field of the, uh, of the magnet. Now for this case, we cannot just identify it we apply the Fleming's left hand rule. And for the Fleming's left hand rule, uh, this is supposed to point the direction of the current, this is supposed to point the direction of the magnetic field, and then I'm not going to stress myself, what I'm going to do is just like this, you see? Just like this, just like this, and just do like this. So the first finger points south, because that is north to south. That is it, I've ensured that. The current is towards P, so that's what I do. And then you can able to see clearly that uh, my thumb is pointing downward. So this conductor will experience a force acting downward and then label it F as instructed. Now, uh, study the effect of reversing the direction of the current in the wire. By reversing the direction of the current, you will actually reverse the direction direction of the force F or in other words you can just say now the force the force will now act upward the force will now act upward if we maintain the north pole and the south pole in their position now there's a, a nice equation here again the, the magnet is removed and 
the horizontal current carrying wire is left on its own as shown uh, on the figure sketch the magnetic uh, field pattern due to the current in the wire uh, as indicated so this question is just the same as this one here you saw that this represent a conductor that is into current is into uh, the page but for this you can able to see so what do we do uh, so assume so if there is the conductor and this is the direction of the current as indicated through here so this is what happens so we expect something like this so we expect uh, something that is uh, circular it's supposed to spread to show there is a away from the conductor so so if this is it so that means uh, we'll be like that then this will be like this that's so that's the direction of the magnetic field now uh, huh. the current in pq is increased so the effect of this change in current in the magnetic field so the strength of the magnetic field increases or you can say that uh, the magnetic field lines will be closer so that is uh, how we respond to such questions thank you for watching uh, can you consider subscribing if you find this video useful and if you have a sibling somewhere, a friend, kindly share to them so that we can able to learn. Now, don't miss our next uh, episode where we'll be able to explain uh, the concept about uh, how a motor works and uh, what is the difference between a motor and a generator. Stay safe. Bye.